Welcome to Issues of Contemporary Politics with Dr. Brovkin playlist and the War in Ukraine playlist. The topic of today's presentation is the state of the Russian army. Now, this is based on a report that I have read, and there's a link to it in the description so that you all can watch this uh, presentation yourself. Uh, but there is a re this is my rebuttal to this presentation, which is made by CSIS, which is Center for Strategic and International Studies, uh, a well-known think tank in Washington, D.C., uh, and the presentation uh, in question is the um, analytical failures in the Russian-Ukraine war. This is their presentation. You have several key specialists over there on the war and the Russian affairs, such as Elliot Cohen. Uh, I think he's one of the uh, directors of the CSIS. And then you have... Um, um, several people from RAND Corporation and uh, from other think tanks. Uh, so this is what uh, they didn't invite me uh, to uh, do the rebuttal. They have everybody in this conference who are pretty much thinking and saying the same thing, uh, which is I will summarize their argument and then I will present my views and some facts on the state of the Russian army. Now, uh, the, uh, the report, uh, the analytical failures uh, they claim is that what they're arguing against is the view that they claim prevailed in Western assessments of the Russian army in 2022 at the time of the beginning of the uh, war on, in Ukraine. And what they say is that there was high expectation that Russian army would perform well, that it would take Kyiv in three days, and there were all these reports that it was going to take Kharkov in a, in a day or two, and then they will land and take Odessa, and none of this materialized. And so they say, this is their main thesis, is that the Western perceptions and assessments of the Russian army were vastly exaggerated. And in fact, they claim... Uh, that it was an overestimation of Russian army strength, that the Russian army was corrupt, that the Russian army had outdated equipment, uh, that the Russian army failed miserably in 2022 when it was pushed out. This is the narrative that they accept, pushed out of Kiev and pushed out of Kharkov, and then it was pushed out of Kherson, and therefore uh, it had tremendous uh, difficulties uh, and with the uh, help that came from the United States to Ukrainian army, they could have, and this is the key, they could have had a victory over the Russian army. Now, these people seriously are saying what, that if the United States had given all the help it could have given, more than it had given, Ukraine could have prevailed over the Russian army. I, I absolutely, totally disagree with this assessment. I think it's a ro as wrong as can be, and I will try to show you why. Moreover, what really bothers me when I look at these people is that they, they don't understand the Russians. They don't know Russia. They don't know how it works. They cannot explain how Russia managed in two years to quadruple its military production. They don't understand the mentality of the Russians in their relation to the Ukrainians. They really know so little, and I'm so uh, surprised that people who claim to be such specialists have a very limited knowledge of the condition of the Russian army uh, and also of the Russian mentality. So let me start my rebuttal. The first important thing is that the narrative that uh, the Ukrainians pushed Russians out of Kiev is, is simply wrong and simply not factually correct because, as President Putin many times uh, explained, uh, the purpose of the special military operation was to force Ukraine to negotiations. And it was the French, uh, I believe he said it was Macron, who asked him to withdraw Russian troops from Kyiv so that not to have negotiations, as Putin put it, with the barrel of a gun pointing at the head of your partner in negotiations. So as a gesture of goodwill, uh, the Russians withdrew from Kyiv. Now, uh, 
with uh, with um, uh, Kharkov, it was a little different. Indeed, at that time, Ukrainian army was mobilized and it had 600,000 men uh, in arms and the Russian army had 200,000. And indeed, uh, in the August, September 2022, the Ukrainians did push out. In fact, the Russians withdrew to a better prepared positions from around Kharkov. Uh, and this is where the line approximately is today. Now, uh, in, in a lot of criticism uh, in respect to 2022 are correct. Uh, that is to say that there was serious corruption in Russian army um, revealed recently, but that probably in the Ukrainian army it was worse. Uh, in fact, uh, Russia didn't have that many drones, and this was a new feature of this war, uh, and, and this was a, a sort of casualties were suffered by the Russian troops for, for the lack of drones. Uh, also, Russians had uh, outdated um, kind of World War II approach to fighting, which was tank concentrations and tank armies, which in the days when everything could be seen uh, and American intelligence passed on to the Ukrainians, uh, it, it really uh, was not a very effective. However, what they failed to mention uh, are two important things. Uh, Russian uh, offensive, uh, Russian war, conduct of war, against Ukraine, both in 22 and to the present day, is not the same as what the Israelis are doing in the West Bank or in Gaza. In other words, there is no carpet bombing. So yes, the Russians are destroying their facilities, uh, electric facilities and military facilities and their factories and so on, but it's, it's not a uh, it, it's not the goal to destroy Ukraine as such. Now also, uh, don't forget, uh, some Western analysts admit that if Putin's goal is to incorporate large chunks of Ukraine into Russia, they don't want to have a waste field over there. They want to minimize the casualties, and especially of their own soldiers, uh, in order to conduct this war in a limited way, something that the, the CSIS critics do not take into account. Fighting Ukraine is not like uh, it would be fighting if it were fighting Poland or, or, or any other NATO member. But the biggest, of course, uh, mistake of these an, uh, an analysis is that uh, there was a tremendous, incredible change from 2022 to 2024, and this is what they don't take into account. So, um, uh, let me just summarize very quickly uh, what the changes were. They're quite well known. Uh, Russia went through what would say quadrupling of its military production. In fact, Western specialists don't understand how it was possible to do in such a long, such a short time. Uh, people give uh, examples of the United States, how it did it in World War II, uh, incredible uh, in increase in military production. Well, something similar is happening in Russia. Uh, and the, the simple answer to that is it's a Soviet industrial base. All these factories and plants turning out hundreds of thousands uh, of uh, tons of steel uh, and then uh, hundreds of tanks and, and artillery pieces and ammunition and trucks. All of this is quadrupled. Uh, from zero, they started production of most sophisticated drones, partly with Iranian cooperation. In other words, what, what, what has happened is absolutely incredible to Western specialists, which they prefer to ignore. And that is that Russia produces three million uh, shells for artillery pieces a year, which is double that of all NATO countries combined. This is the Soviet industrial base that is uh, producing this amazing rearmament of the Russian army. Moreover, Russian equipment is probably the best, if not equal, but probably better. Russian tanks are better than anybody else's tanks. And there are 14,000 of them. 14,000. Now, of course, Ukrainians received two challenges and two uh, Leopards and one Abraham's banks, and this is n nothing to compare with. Uh, all the Soviet tanks, hundreds of them were destroyed, um, Ukrainian Soviet manufactured tanks. 
So rearmament uh, of the Russian army is going full swing. And at this point, at the end of 2024, there's one and a half million Russian army in all units. There are all kinds. There's an army, a navy, an air force, and there's a Russian uh, guards, and there is uh, all kinds of other volunteer units uh, all together. Uh, moreover, the plan is to make it 1.8 million fighting army by 2026. Uh, so this is this is um, in terms of is the quality of um, ammunition and uh, technical base. As I said, it's uh, 14,000 tanks. Russian aircraft is slightly smaller number than the American ones, but they are equal uh, in their capacities. Uh, such as uh, Su-57, uh, Su-30, MiG-29, and uh, there's a total uh, uh, command of the skies over Ukraine. Uh, and of course, um, uh, this is uh, felt in the current, um, current offensive. Now, uh, the, 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 the trump card, so to speak, of the Russian army, or the most powerful of its ingredients, is the uh, air defense system S-400, uh, and now S-500, and also uh, Russian hypersonic missiles. Now, the Kinjal and the, um, and the Iskander and, uh, and Bulava and several others. Now, what has to be understood in, about these missiles? is that the United States does not have anything like this. They have some that are close to being hypersonic, but uh, they're not at that level at all. Now, the, the good thing about them is that they do not have to carry nuclear uh, charge, nuclear missile. They could be just a regular one. And the best of them, the one that go 10 or, or even higher marsh um, speed of sound, 10 times higher than the speed of sound, uh, they cannot be detected by radar. By the time they appear on radar, they already hit. And, and they, the, 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 the uh, explosive weight of their, tar of, of their explosion is enough to produce an incredible damage without nuclear weapon, without nuclear missile head. And at the same time, uh, it's precision targeting. So, let's just imagine for the moment that what uh, Stoltenberg and uh, Rutte, the new Secretary General of the NATO, uh, let's imagine for the second that they want Ukraine in NATO. It was confirmed yesterday. Rutte, the new Secretary, says the place of Ukraine in NATO. Okay, if it is in NATO, if it is admitted, let's admit for the moment, although it's not going to happen, that it is admitted in NATO, and NATO joins the war against the Russian army. Okay, tomorrow, what's going to happen? You have 200,000 British army, you have 200,000 French army, you have 175,000 German army, and you have 300,000 Polish army, which is uh, countered by 300,000 uh, Belarusian army. So all these Western armies combined is still not going to be enough to fight the Russian army in numbers. And of course, in equipment, the Russian uh, the Russians are now superior and producing more than all NATO countries combined. Now they say, what if Americans joined in? Okay, that's not possible for political reasons because Americans do not want to have an, uh, uh, fighting troops in Russia. But what if they did? Just imagine, Ukraines have lost, Ukrainian forces lost 500,000 by now. Is American public opinion ready to fight for Ukraine and lose? 10,000, 20,000, 50,000, 100,000 men. And how are they going to get there? Are they going to go by ships? Would the ships not be torpedoed by the Russian submarines? How are they going to get 500,000 troops to fight the Russians? And even if they did, it would be, uh, okay, a million of NATO troops, 800,000, against a million and a half now. In other words, to take on Russia militarily is impossible. This is what NATO people have to understand. It cannot be done, even if they wanted to, overcoming all the hurdles of political obstacles that they have to overcome. And even if it came to uh, 
Russia losing on the battleground, which, as I said, is highly unlikely. Then they go nuclear. And if they go nuclear, Russia has more nuclear missiles than anybody else, including the United States. The war against Russia cannot be won. And this is what Mr. Stoltenberg and Mr. Uh, Rutte have to understand. And no matter how much they want to defeat, uh, to make strategic defeat of Russia, that's impossible. So this is the main message. Uh, in the analysis of the state of the Russian army. Thank you very much. Please subscribe uh, and read my book from uh, Vladimir Lenin to Vladimir Putin, Russia in Search of Its Identity. Thank you.